No matter what else is happening in the world. There is always good news today. Welcome to Good News Today, the program where you will always find good news, no matter what else is happening in the world. I'm Mark Tesk, your host for Good News Today. I want to thank you for joining us. We've got a great program. Here's what's coming up. We're going to begin with our devotional time, and that consists of our scripture reading, beautiful singing, and a brief study of our scripture. Today we'll be looking at Ezra 10, 1 through 4, where we learn about how God views marriage. Get out your Bibles, turn to Ezra 10. I'll meet you there in just a moment. Following our devotional time, Roger Campbell joins us, and he's answering the question, which people have the right to get married? Jim Dearman will join us with some sound words about battered but beautiful. Then Austin Fowler sits down with Barry Gilreath, and they go through some questions that everyone needs to ask before they get married. Chad Dollahide joins us for just a minute as he encourages us to go back to the original source for information about marriage. In our final segment, we have a Bible question for Anthony Dismuke and Troy Spradlin. Are you more holy if you don't marry? A lot of information about marriage today, and I hope you have your Bible opened up to Ezra chapter 10, where we read, beginning at verse 1. Now while Ezra was praying, and while he was confessing, weeping, and bowing down before the house of God, a very large assembly of men, women, and children gathered to him from Israel, for the people wept very bitterly. And Shechaniah, the son of Jehiel, one of the sons of Elam, spoke up and said to Ezra, We have trespassed against our God, and have taken pagan wives from the peoples of the land. Yet now there is hope in Israel in spite of this. Now therefore let us make a covenant with our God to put away all these wives and those who have been born to them, according to the advice of my master and of those who tremble at the commandment of our God. And let it be done according to the law. Arise, for this matter is your responsibility. We also are with you. Be of good courage and do it. The book of Ezra takes place when Judah had just returned from their 70 years of captivity at the hands of the Babylonians. The Israelites came back in several different waves over a period of years. And some of those who had come back early had married the women of the land. The text tells us in chapter 9, verse 2, that the leaders were foremost in this sin. Ezra's first reaction was astonishment at their sin. You see, this was a direct violation of God's law, Deuteronomy 7, 3, nor shall you make marriages with them. You shall not give your daughter to their son, nor take their daughter for your son. Now, this law in Deuteronomy 7, 3 wasn't due to race, but it was religious in nature. The context of Deuteronomy 7 highlights the religious purity that was demanded for God's people. And the last two chapters in the book of Ezra deal with the situation. Chapter 9 details Ezra's prayer on behalf of the people. Chapter 10 goes through the process of what, was what it took to correct that problem. 
So when we get to our text here, chapter 10, verse 1, we have a large group of people coming before Ezra. Shechaniah speaks up on behalf of the group and confesses that they have sinned in marrying these pagan women. The solution that was proposed was put away these women and their children according to the law. The rest of the book of Ezra deals, details this process that they went through. Chapter 10, verse 44, some of the men had children from these marriages, and they had to put those children away with their wives. There was no exception given for that situation. So what are we to learn from this? Well, first off, God's laws about who is allowed to marry are to be obeyed. Now, we're not under the same old covenant today. Uh, we don't stone rebellious, rebellious children. We don't perform animal sacrifices, abstain from pork and seafood, and perform circumcision on the eighth day. No, no, we're under a different law. You see, if you try to follow that law, if you stumble in any one of those parts, you're guilty of the entire law, James 2.10. Those laws were for a specific group of people, the Israelites, for a limited period of time, Isaiah 2.2 and Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34. But you see, the law that we're to obey are the commands given in the New Testament, including the New Testament laws on marriage. But this passage helps us to understand how seriously God takes that issue, because our society has gotten away from God's standards and replaced it with its own standards. But realize God is not going to overlook those sins. He concerns, uh, concerned about this issue. And the solution to an improper marriage is to end the marriage. Now that sounds harsh to some people, but if it isn't that big of a deal, if God really doesn't care, He owes these Israelites an apology. But you see, God means exactly what He says about who's allowed to enter into marriage. This information is given to us from the Old Testament for a reason, Romans 15, verse 4. We need to appreciate the importance of the purity of this God-made institution. See, marriage, it can be a great blessing if we follow God's pattern. And that is good news for us today. Now, Roger Campbell is ready, as always, to answer a question. Today, he's been asked, which people have the right to get married? Be ready always. In all of God's creation, humans are the only beings or living things that have the blessing that we know as marriage. Willy worms and banana trees and giraffes, they don't get married. Humans do. It's a blessing that God has bestowed on mankind. Today our question is, in God's sight, who has the right to get married? How would you answer that? As a Christian, we're supposed to be ready to give a defense or give an answer, 1 Peter 3 and verse number 15. Now, a key thought in our question is, in God's sight. We can't answer this question by emotions, and we need to do more than appeal to what civil law says. But in God's sight, who has the right to get married? In the long ago, God through Moses said to the children of Israel, you shall do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with thee, Deuteronomy 6 and verse 18. That's what we want to do. We want to do and we want to say and we want to practice what's right in the sight of God. The Bible declares that marriage is honorable. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse number 4. God's the one who established marriage. That blessing He gives to mankind, now He doesn't force us to do it. He doesn't require us to get married, but He allows marriage. And so we want to know the particulars. Which people have the right to get married. And so when we investigate the teaching of the new covenant under which we live today, we find that there are three categories of people who have the right to get married. First of all, people who never have been married before 
have the right to get married. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, Paul addresses a number of topics related to marriage. Evidently, there have been some questions the brethren had asked. And he said, I say to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I, the indication being to remain single. But if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it's better to marry than to burn or to burn with passion. That's verses 8 and 9. So in verse 28, if one decides to marry, never been married, they don't sin. Number two, in this chapter, we read in verse 39, what about a widow? The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth, but if her husband be dead, she's at liberty to be married to whom she will only in the Lord. So someone who's lost their spouse by way of death, a widow or a widower, would have the right to marry. And a third group of people would be those by implication from the instruction of Matthew chapter 19. Jesus affirmed that if a person divorces his wife but not because she's committed fornication, and he goes and marries another woman, his relation with woman number two, that's adultery. The implication is, if he does divorce his spouse because of her fornication, then he does have the right to enter into a subsequent marriage. Nobody else, just those three groups. One who's never been married, one whose spouse has died, and number three, one who's divorced their spouse because of their spouse's sexual unfaithfulness. Now, if I'm planning on getting married, I need to ask, do I have the right? And number two, that person whom I want to marry, do they have the right? And we need to have an affirmative yes on both of those before we take the plunge. I'm Roger King, and this has been Be Ready Always. Those three categories that Roger gave, those who have never been married before, those whose spouse has passed away, and those who have divorced their spouse because of sexual unfaithfulness. Thanks, Roger. It's always a good thing to spend time studying the Word of God. We offer a free Bible course to help you do that very thing. We're going to give you our contact information, then we'll be joined by Jim Dearman. You may have questions or comments about Good News Today. We'd like to hear from you. Or if you would like to receive free Bible study materials, please contact us. Our mailing address is Good News Today, P.O. Box 206, Dunlap, Tennessee, 37327. Again, that's Good News Today, P.O. Box 206, Dunlap, Tennessee, 37327. You may prefer to email us at goodnewstodaytv at gmail.com. That's goodnewstodaytv at gmail.com. Or call us toll free at 1 877 384 7221. That's 1 877 384 7221. We'd like to hear from you. Hearing from our audience is always good news to us. The easiest way to enroll in our Bible course is in our website, gnttv.org. Just click where it says Bible course, fill out the information, and we'll mail it to you. Did you know that Good News Today can be heard through our channel on truth.fm? This is a group of streaming radio stations that offer great biblical programming for listeners around the world. If you haven't done so already, check out truth.fm and look for the Good News Today channel. Now here's Jim Dearman with some sound words for us about battered but beautiful. We will live eternally if we obey sound words. On the coast of Pescadero, California is the famed Pebble Beach. There the waves dash with a ceaseless roar and thunder among the stones on the beach. The pitiless waves toss and grind those stones together and hurl them against the rugged cliffs. Day and night, the wearing down of the stones continues uh, unabated. Tourists from all over the world gather the beautiful, round, polished stones for ornaments in their homes. Near Pebble Beach is a towering cliff which breaks the force of the dashing waves. In the quiet cove, sheltered by the cliff, is an abundance of stones. These are unsought and unwanted. They have escaped the turmoil and beating of the waves. And so they're rough, they're angular, they're devoid of beauty. 
You know, billows of sorrow and trouble polish and refine us and give to us the opportunity to prove the genuineness of the Savior's comforting, healing words. As the inspired writer James put it, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. James 1, 2 through 4. Jim, thanks for those sound words that will help us appreciate the bumps and bruises of life. Have you ever missed an episode of Good News Today and wish you could watch it? There's a few ways you can do that, through our website, Facebook, or YouTube. You can also download our app, watch it on your phone, television, or tablet. You never have to miss an episode. And you won't want to miss Austin Fowler's visit with Barry Gilreath, as they give some questions that a person should ask before they get married in our Fabric of Family segment. Austin, it's good to have you with us on this short segment today. And uh, we're going to be talking about uh, questions that really we ought to think about before one enters into marriage. Um, you know, if you're going to enter into any kind of uh, field, say a, a secular field, there are some basic understandings that you need to have uh, going into the, the study of that field. or uh, And likewise, the same is true concerning marriage. What are some things that, that uh, come to your mind as we think about questions we ought to ask before we enter into marriage? I think this is a great question. I think it's one that needs to be uh, considered by anybody that's getting into marriage or you know looking at getting married soon. I think the first question they ask is, what kind of person is this? Is this a Christian I'm dealing with? If if, if they aren't a Christian, you need to strongly consider, mm -hmm. you know, um, are they will they will, willing to study with you to be converted? Uh, those types of things. Because you don't want to, very unwise as we talked yeah. about in another segment of marrying somebody that's not a Christian. But, you know, so first, and but also if they are a Christian, what kind of Christian are they? Are they just kind of a lukewarm Christian? Are they somebody that's dedicated? Are they somebody that's, uh, fully mm -hmm. involved in the work of the church because you don't want to marry somebody that's lukewarm that only shows up to church you know sometimes and they don't go back on Sunday nights and you're having mm -hmm. to drag them there you know you want you want somebody that's going to help you get to heaven yeah. and that's a very important question as well yeah yeah is this person going to help me get to heaven I think also you know you need to think about the future yeah, for is sure. this is this person going to to help our children uh, get to heaven. And, um, you know, as you pointed out, we need to have a, a basic understanding of uh, the basics of marriage. What is marriage? Do I understand that it is a lifelong commitment? Um, you know, what does the Bible say if someone wants to get out of a marriage? Can they do that? I think, I think that's things you need to talk to whoever you're considering. Number one, moral issues. What, mm -hmm. what's, their, what's their stance on marriage? Do they believe it's one man, one woman for life? And, yes. and that, I mean, that's God's intent for marriage. And that's a conversation you need to have, but also other morality issues, I think, are things that need to be addressed. Sometimes we just kind of, maybe when we're dating people, we kind of just sweep those yeah. under the rug and say, oh, well, maybe they'll change later. Yeah. And, and you know, but we don't mm -hmm. talk about the morality issues such as dancing, drinking, and uh, even social drinking. Do they believe that that is a sin like the Bible depicts mm -hmm. and staying away from those things? And so, uh, you know, those morality questions are also very important uh, when it comes to looking at somebody and, and a lot of these things really ought to be brought out in, in premarital counseling. If right. I've always encouraged couples to go through that uh, and, you know, sit down with someone who, who has those good values and, and just let them kind of go through these things with you because uh, they're going to eventually come up. Yeah. And so it's much better that those questions are answered on the front end than uh, someone, you know, wringing their hand saying, I didn't know this yeah. or I wish I'd known this in the past because. Marriage is for life. Well, that's uh, that's uh, just some thoughts I had, and I appreciate you you sharing your thoughts as well as uh, there are those who are considering getting married and uh, maybe even some who are watching the program today. Hope that they will uh, think about these things. Sometimes we get all caught up into the emotion of it, but we also need to to, to walk through some of these things about this person that I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. Austin, thank you for being with us. Good to be here. Thanks, guys. Those are important questions to ask.
We've just launched another podcast, Have a Bible Question. That's in addition to our three other podcasts that are also available. A new episode of this new podcast comes out every week, and it's available wherever you get your podcast. Chad Dalahai joins us for just a minute as he urges us to go to the original source of authority for marriage. May I have just a minute of your time? There are times when we need to go back to the source. Like a spring, many times as it goes downstream, the further downstream you go, the more corrupted and dingy it gets. Likewise, there are things in life that are so pure at their source and yet so marred by man. We need to go back to the source for marriage. Marriage did not originate with man, but with God. In fact, interestingly, God performed the very first wedding ceremony. Too many today look to human wisdom concerning marriage. But never forget, God is the source of marriage. And when we go back to the source, we know marriage is not, cannot be between a man and a man or a woman and a woman. We also learn when we go back to the source how to have happy marriages. Folks, let's drink from the clear, pure source when it comes to marriage, not the murky, muddy waters of human wisdom. God's Word is and always will be right. For the best marriage, go back to the source. I'm Chad Dalahut, and this is Just a Minute. Thanks, Chad. We need to understand the pure intent that God designed for marriage, and we can read about it in our Bibles. In just a moment, we'll give our Bible question to Anthony and Troy. Now we have a Bible question for Anthony and Troy. Are you more holy if you don't marry? Troy, we're faced with a, a very good question today. Okay, okay. what uh, question do we have? It's coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, uh, verse number 8. Oh, all right. And, and, and the question is, is it more honorable? Is one more honorable than others if they don't marry? That's oh, the wow. question. And I can see where that question comes from because the passage says, uh, as Paul is writing here, says, but I say to the unmarried and to the widows, it is good for them if they remain even as I am. And we all know that the reading through the Bible that Paul was not married. So right. he's saying it's good. Is it is it honorable then to mm. be like Paul? Well, um, I don't think there is a difference. The Bible doesn't make a difference between what is more holy or honorable or anything right. as one being married versus not being married. Right. What's holy uh, and what's honorable is honorable. What's holy is holy. And the thing for us to pay attention to is the text. Right? That's right. You, you have to keep Always. things in context. Mm -hmm. uh, in this situation, Paul is is giving this advice, is giving this advice based upon the present distress. That's right. Because they're given to fornication in, in this situation. And so he's saying that, you know, it's, in some situations, these marriages are not going well. And so it would be better for some of you not to be married um, because that might cause you to sin, to be in a marriage. Then also for others of you, the widows and things of that nature, which we read in the verse, if you cannot withstand um, from participating in such things, then get married. That's right. So he's just telling them that it, it would be better in that verse. It would be better for you to, at this present moment, maybe withstand, maybe focus on fasting and things of that nature and not get into a marriage. Right. Or if you can't withhold, 
then you should. Then. So he's bringing it back to the most important thing, which is the the soul. He's bringing it back to a spiritual application. What's right. more important is is your soul and that it winds up where it's supposed to be. Certainly, if you're married, does it make you more honorable or holy? Because, right. uh, you know, remember, God's the one who invented or ordained marriage. And mm-hmm. even Jesus in Matthew chapter 9 says that what God is joined together, let no man Correct. separate. That's right. Uh, you see where elders, uh, they have to be married in order to be right. eligible to uh, be the leaders. And so you can't really make that separation whenever it comes to what's more honorable. It really has to do with context of the passage to be right. able to answer the question. Yes. And, and, and we know in several ways in several passages does God use the institution of marriage to describe his relationship oh, yes. with the body of Christ. That's right. Ephesians 5, 22 through 25, mm-hmm. he gives us that analogy uh, as as Christ is, is the husband, considered the husband, and, and the church being the bride and things of that nature. So he uses marriage to let us know how we our relationship works with him. So certainly marriage is a wonderful and beautiful thing, and God would not give us that institution and use it as an example for uh, for for Christ and our relationship with him if it wasn't uh, a holy thing and an honorable That's thing. That's exactly that. right. And the most important thing is what Paul is telling them. He's say, saying the same thing that Peter says in 1 Peter 1, verses 15. He says, mm-hmm. be ye holy for I am holy, talking about God saying that. We must be uh, what God wants us to be, and that is to be holy, which is to be separate from the world. So whether you're married... Mm-hmm. or whether you are single, you need to separate from the world. That's what's the most important thing. Right, and you, you hit it spot on. That's the most important thing. So marriage uh, doesn't make you more honorable uh, than a person who is single, single uh, and neither does one who's single make you more honorable than one who's married. For we know Hebrews 13, 4 says marriage is honorable in, in all things. Amen. <laughs> We've had a lot of information in our program as we focused on who should and who shouldn't get married. We encourage you to always check all religious teaching against the Word of God to see if these things are really the case. Be like those Bereans in Acts 17, 11 and search the Scripture. Maybe you need to watch or listen to the program again to hear it. Have some extra time to check those Scriptures. Write them down. See for yourself. You can do that through our website, through our apps, or through our podcast. If you still have a question, contact us. We'd love to hear from you. We might even answer that on the program. Remember that we love you, we're praying for you, and we want you to make it to heaven. Always good news, good news, good news. There is good news today. Good news, good news. The world always good news. Good news, good news, there is good news today. All around the world, good news, good news, always good news. Good news, good news, there is good news today. All around the world, always good news, good news, always good news.